international virtual conferences. So uh, uh, Dr. Nick with the, uh, uh, Dr. Alvesa would uh, present her uh, topic entitled In the Nick of Time, Responsiveness, uh, Patient Care with Wearable Technology. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Alvesa. Yes, thanks. I'm going to share my... Thank you. Yeah. First of all, uh, a warm greetings from uh, Canada uh, to all of you. And uh, I would like to thank the... Um, Confrontiers for this invitation. Okay, the title of my uh, topic of presentation, uh, just a second, is In the Neck of Time Responsive Patient Care with Wearable Technology. The objective of this presentation is to gain a better understanding of how wearable technology will enhance our clinical practice and to prepare us nurses, and I will add other health workers to intelligently respond to this new era of technology. And uh, I will start my presentation with a short introduction followed by history of wearable technology, then their application in medicine, their challenges and opportunities in the medical industries, our nursing skill response to this emerging technology and what are the future wearable innovation in medicine. As we all know, uh, te technology advances uh, in uh, our world or changes our world in a warp speed, okay? Among those uh, changes is this wearable devices which have been evolved and have been adapted uh, for various uh, what you call this uh, uses, not only improving overall awareness of fitness and activity, it also genera generates signals that will detect sleep, heart rate, arrhythmia, body position, continuous glucose monitoring, hospital acquired pressure injury, detector, and more. Advancements in the area of wearable system will continue to transform and enhance the quality of our nursing care. So we nurses are going to be increasingly responsible for taking care of patients who uses it. So second, a short history of wearable technology. It started in 13th century with uh, this form of eyeglasses. Then there is the hearing aid, which is uh, made of metal. So that's why it called down metal ear. And then, in, 19, in 1777 is the pedometer, which was invented by Abraham Louis Herrelly. It was modified and released uh, by Mampo K in 1956 and also developed in 1960 by Dr. Yashiro Yatano in Kyushu University. And if you remember, we have in 1958, there was the first implantable cardiac pacemaker uh, by Rune Elmsfeld, uh, one of a uh, cardiac surgeon, surgeon from Solna, Sweden, who invented this uh, implantable cardiac pacemaker. And in 1980, the polar watch that can monitor the heart rate started. And then from 2006 to 2013, different company like Nike, Fitbit, uh, developed their own um, smart uh, devices, okay? but it was in 2014 that that the year of the wearable technology by Apple Watch. So third, I'm going to uh, uh, discuss about their application in medicine. And the bios, there are various types of biosensor, okay? It could be in a form of a jewelry, a fitness trackers, a head mounted displays, smart watches, clothing, patches, implants, ingestible devices, and a tattoo-like uh, plastic patch. So these two slides, I'm going to explain to you through the following images. For example, this uh, smart watch. Here, this is linked to a, a, a smart device or a smartphone. It will detect uh, the number of steps, okay? And also the blood pressure, the respiratory rate, the saturation, oxygen saturation, the uh, glycemic level, and the heart rate. Another one 
is uh, this called smartwatch that can identify whether it was uh, the rhythm, the heart rhythm of the client or the patient is it's in sinus rhythm or in atrial fib. Another one is in a form of a smart ring. If you can see the green light here, this is a sensor that can detect the blood pressure and the calorie burn on that day and also the number of steps that the uh, client uh, did. And this is another one, the upright go to correct the posture positioning. It will give a little uh, vibration at the back uh, of the person so that it will give a vibration uh, once uh, the person is not uh, properly sitting or standing. Another one is the ultraviolet sense. If you can see there's a, a blood a part, a blue spot and it is, that is attached to the hair here and it will detect the amount of exposure of the ultraviolet. And this is an anti-snoring armbar by Sleep AI. And this one here, uh, it is also linked to a, a smart device and it will uh, um, catch all the snoring or the grinding uh, period of the client or the patient. The other one is the continuous glucose monitoring, which utilizes the real-time alarms for threshold and prediction of hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. And this is not uh, covered before by the insurance, but lately uh, this one is already uh, here in Canada. We covered already uh, uh, this um, uh, glucose monitoring um, gut patches. And there's one Embrace 2 uh, epilepsy monitoring. This is a watch wear by the person with epileptic problem and it will link to the uh, uh, smart uh, phone devices. And then uh, it will record all the period or the episode of uh, convulsion that the epileptic patient uh, did. Another one is the ZEO. This one in the, uh, more and more, it will replace the um, uh, whole term monitoring uh, that we all know a patient to uh, uh, diagnose if there is any problem of arrhythmia. So this CU that can be worn around 14 days and is a waterproof. So the patient can, uh, uh, what you could wear this and uh, it can uh, detect for 14 days all any abnormal arrhythm or we call arrhythmia. So this will uh, more and more will replace the water monitoring which can be only uh, uh, wore by the uh, patient for two days or 40, uh, 48 hours. And this is a brain band that is being used by the athletes uh, to be able to uh, detect any concussion during a contact sports. And this is the uh, wearable thermometer that we can use for especially the preterm in, in, in the incubator, the, the babies or the newborn, you can put this uh, uh, wearable thermometer and you can uh, that um, read continuously the temperature of the patient without disturbing the sleep of the baby. Another one is another kid smarts watch. Uh, we can, uh, we can uh, motivate kids to move and teach kids to be healthy, nurturing and active through entertaining activities. And by this, it will promote healthy activities and serve as, as a step counter sensor too. And this is a smart health note, which is being used right now during pandemic. Uh, this one here, there is a, a sensor that can capture the temperature of the people, especially people uh, visiting the hospital. Uh, they can capture the temperature up to uh, five meters uh, distance. So the opportunities of this wearable technology is that improve insights to health rest, enhance disease surveillance, promote health management, it render patient empowerment and motivation, and also satisfaction. It can, we can access to data quality, better quality and personal details. It decreases workload. Um, this one, especially for those continuous con uh, uh, 
uh, glucose monitoring. We don't have uh, to always uh, prick, uh, we call that the needle prick for those uh, diabetic patients. So it really decreased the workload. Enable home diagnostic testing, fast access to patient's condition. And it's improved timely identification of deteriorating health, avoidance of hospitalization and costly admission to ICU. And for the researcher, uh, this to really generate more granular data sets for clinical research. What it did is uh, for this wearable uh, uh, called device, it's that the sensor will be worn by the client or the patient, and it transmits the patient's data to a mobile home, uh, phone or an access point. And this uh, will, uh, it relate information to a remote center via the internet to activate uh, health, for example, from the emergency team, family member, or their healthcare provider. And the challenges of this uh, 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 wearable technology is the, uh, we must have a continuous education regarding e-nursing skills. We must revise our guidelines and specific protocols. And there might be some uncertainty concerning the accuracy and reliability of data derived from wearable devices, especially that there are lots of uh, imitation of these uh, smart devices. And it's quite expensive devices and not covered uh, usually by insurance and Medicare in privacy and security regarding personal data also. Uh, there might be some uh, risk because most of the data, uh, how to call that, gathered are stored in the iCloud. And fifth, it's our nursing response to this emerging technology. So um, nurses should be involved in the design and implementation of this wearable technology, identify the ways patients are best served by technology, and nurses' vital contribution is providing comprehensive standardized data of patient assessment, outcome details, and refined patient care protocol. And we must try to integrate informatics programming uh, in nursing education. And nurses will serve as consultant to what wearable technology may be designed to and identify which patients are suitable uh, for uh, personal fitness trackers which uh, derive heart rate monitoring, which patients are most suitable as well as software development to optimize recording accuracy in a wide range of illness, including those associated with pulse deficit. A nurse education, educator should lead nursing uh, students and allow them to learn research, development, production of their invention of, or ideas. And uh, what are the future innovation in medicine? So here are some of the futures. Some are almost uh, on their third clinical, uh, uh, what you call that study. And uh, some is only uh, lacking for the FDA approval. Is this a high-speed wireless that will monitor vital signs uh, remotely with this wearable patch? And this in the future will replace this ICU monitoring right now with too much cable attached so this one will, uh, will replace and uh, 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 for this uh, ICU monitoring patient. And there's also a skin-based devices like in, uh, in uh, epidermal uh, form, which is attached to the skin and enables the healthcare provider to promote, uh, remotely um, monitor the patient, uh, especially uh, for the aging patient with multiple chronic conditions. And also, uh, Soon there will be a carbon monoxide uh, sensor. Another one is this uh, smart band aid. Uh, this one, uh, with, it will be uh, uh, what you call that soon, maybe in a few months, uh, this band aid. Um, this will diagnose, for example, this is very useful for the chronic one uh, patient, especially the diabetic patient, because this band aid uh, will first detect what bacteria is in the wound, and after that, it will provide the exact way, uh, the appropriate ointment that the bacteria will be sensitive to. 
another one is the EMA uh, watch, uh, smart watch uh, that will be used by the Parkinson disease patient. This one is uh, will try to tame the hand tremor of the Parkinson disease patient. And this one is uh, lacking for the third uh, clinical trials, then it will be approved uh, soon by the FDA. Another one is the electroscope shoes uh, to be used uh, also for Parkinson's disease patient. Uh, this one is to help uh, especially the gait problem uh, of this uh, patient. This A-brain headband uh, to uh, reduce the pressure and, um, for, and also good for the Alzheimer patient is actually used now in Korea. But uh, here in the North America, they are still uh, trying to uh, uh, ask the approval for the FDA. And there is also the smart contact lens that will provide the uh, level of glucose for the diabetic patient. And this one also the siren uh, smart socks. Uh, these socks here, um, the person will subscribe for around $19 a year and they will be provided every three months, six pairs of socks. And this socks here, if you can see at the side, there is a biosensor that also can detect the level of glucose of this uh, patient. And this can is a hand machine uh, washable, washable uh, machine washable and dryable also. And this one here is the uh, nano, uh, nano wearable or non, uh, sample sense nanoware. This one will capture millions of signals on the skin and giving it the potential to unlock the biometric insights to help wide ranging medical conditions such as cardiac heart uh, failure or pe people with electrocardiogram uh, will have an electrocardiogram, um, uh, what you call that um, monitor, heart rate, respiratory rate, and also actigraphy and pendants cardiography, thoracic and pendants and cardiophonography with this uh, nanoware. And then also we have this uh, smart skin um, patch to detect dehydration. This is really also good for the people who are uh, uh, what you call that uh, sportive. And there is also a spray can be in the form of nano mesh wearable. And this is smart eyeglasses, this is our future, um, uh, what's called that uh, wearable device that can be used uh, by nurses and other healthcare workers. Uh, what this can do, uh, it gives first a personal virtual assistance. Uh, this is a device that can remind any meetings, take notes during per professional discussion and pull up data quickly on demand. It can contribute safety by reminding nurses and specific, of the specific steps or pitfalls while performing a procedure. Second, patient information, because it will access the right information at the right time. Um, it will display the patient records, vital signs on the lens of the eyeglasses. By, for example, when you enter a patient room, and it will alert a nurse of a sudden change if the patient's status, uh, which could go contribute to a faster uh, response. And the third is communication. It's, um, it's a form of a smartwatch, which could use a voice command to send quickly updates or reminders and call um, all without having to fumble a handheld devices. And this is useful in emergency situation where team of providers have to be mobilized quickly and contribute also a quieter hospital environment because um, we don't have to ask the operator uh, to, um, to call the health providers. And uh, so uh, with all this the wearable technology, are we prepared for this incoming innovation? And a special note for the stakeholder in healthcare that uh, we sh they should engage in a constructive discussion on how to integrate the advancements in wearable technology in order to enhance the, uh, uh, the quality of our clinical practice. So I thank you for your attention. Any questions?